Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones, and joining me is Phil Boyle. So, Phil, how are you? I'm good, Phil. I'm good. So today we're going to be back answering some more questions, some common things, that because Phil and I have these conversations throughout the week, and we kind of want to let you guys in on some of these conversations. So, Phil, what would you like to talk about today? So it's 2024, and there's all these amazing light source technologies. You've got um, a variety of laser technologies. Now you've got LEDs that can produce more than 3,000 ANSI lumens of brightness. It's 2024. Why would I buy a projector that has a lamp in it and not an LED or a laser? Okay, so this came up, by the way, because um, Phil was reviewing a really good little BenQ, and yeah. he also had just got done reviewing another BenQ, and they retail for the same price. For example, on our website, if you look at something like a BenQ, BenQ makes this little projector called a HT3650. It is their, one mm -hmm. of their home cinema projectors, retails for around 1700 bucks, and it has a lamp. But then they make another projector, which we also liked a lot, called the GP500, which retails for around $1,799, and it has an LED. And there's a mm -hmm. reason for both projectors. So um, when it comes to light sources, it is a fact that you can get better quality light for less money if you use a lamp, which means you can spend money on other things. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you think about it, uh, uh, if you're looking for more brightness or maybe deeper black levels, because you can use you can incorporate features like a dynamic iris at those price points, you may want to gravitate to a lamp, even though you can get an LED or an LED light source or laser light source projector at the same price point. So talk to me. If I'm, I, I guess, really what it comes down to is how are you intending to use this projector? I mean, if I'm going to be doing things that require, you know, uh, uh, very contrasty colors, right? Dynamic colors, gaming, for example, mm -hmm. um, laser and LED, they do a fantastic job. But, mm -hmm. um, but, and, and lamp does a good job too. But for home theater, I think there's a bigger argument to be made for, you know, saving some money and, and getting a projector that you know, has some other features in it, but it's powered by a lamp. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's interesting, because um, I would factor it down to, okay, if brightness, if you have a certain amount of money, and you're looking for maybe higher brightness and better black levels, and mm -hmm. your budget is $17.99, you may gravitate toward a 3650 it has a game mode and everything else. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a projector that has um, uh, maybe a bigger sound system, maybe more portable, that has the peace of mind of an LED, it runs cooler than the lamp, you know, it has a bigger sound system, you may gravitate towards that one. So like you said, Phil, it has to do with the use case. It isn't the fact that the LED light source is better it's just at this price point, what is the best combination of features? An LED light source and or a laser light source, while they're coming down, they're still more expensive than a bulb. But it'd be like going to a restaurant and saying, if I spend all the money, if I, if I buy the better cut of steak for that $25 meal, the <coughs> sides aren't going to, I can't use as good of a sides or I can't use as good of spices to go along with those particular things. So it's this combination of things that go together. And eventually you get to a price point where you can have all the best ingredients, but you got to pay for it. So manufacturers have to balance that between how much money am I trying to sell this projector for? What is the customer going to be using this for? And what's the best combination of features? Um, and part of the features that we're talking about is the light source. Because there, there's, there's give and take with, with every light source. So, for example, let's laser. Laser, I think we can, we can agree that laser is probably, the potent, as a, from a potential standpoint, the top of the heap in performance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's got the wider, the widest dynamic range, uh, or sorry, the, the widest color gamut uh, capability. It's just, you know, the, the top of the mountain. But it can have a downside. For example, you know, laser speckle. Um, you don't see laser speckle when you use a lamp projector, right? Yeah, exactly. but, on the, but on the flip side, that laser 
you know, it produces a wider range of colors and it lasts longer. Exactly. So, so let's go back to that. So we're talking about a three laser, like a tri-laser projector. Right. You're starting to see um, those projectors can produce up to Rec 2020 or BT 2020 color space, huge amounts of color. Um, right. However, most content you're watching is not really going to have it. Um, you can expand the color range of a lamp using what's called a cinema filter to expand the color range of that lamp, but it's going to reduce its brightness. So that one of the benefits of a laser is maximum color gamut at its maximum brightness. That's a, one of the advantages of it. The question mm -hmm. is, do you need it when you're watching an older movie or you're watching content that's already being shot today? And does that extra color gamut make up for the fact that maybe at that price point, I could not deliver the black levels that I could do if I was using the lamp because I can use something like a, a dynamic iris or, right. or some other trick to make it. So um, there's advantages to both. And like I said, the laser lasers 20,000 hours is not a problem. 30,000 hours on an LED. Now, lamps in lower power and eco mode, you're getting to into a, like tens of thousands of hours as well. But they are a little bit more maintenance you got to be concerned with. I can power off an, a, a laser projector or an LED projector and within a minute be able to unplug it and move it. You can't do that with a bulb if you right. want your bulb to survive. So, and the bulb systems are going to generate way more heat. You know? right. So if you're looking for maybe a portable application, an LED or a laser is probably the better way to go. Um, if you like those more vibrant colors, you want it to be more portable, that may, that may be the way to go. Um, if you're playing, like you said, games, and, and those vibrant colors look really good on the games, you may go to an, to an LED um, display. But watching a movie, home theater, it's going to be mounted to the back of my room, and I'm really concerned with what it looks like when I watch cinema. The lamp, for that price, may be the better option. Yeah, the other thing we want to talk about, too, is we often talk about, oh, you know, this laser light source is estimated to last or guaranteed to last 20,000 hours. That's 10 years of normal operation. Mm -hmm. uh, and some LED light sources are exceeding, you know, manufacturers are claiming 30,000 plus hours. I think the best lamp is about 15. But mm -hmm. the way it's not so much about getting to 15,000 hours or 20 or 30,000 hours. It's how that light source ages. And, um, you know, a, a laser light source and to, uh, to an extent, an LED light source, they age differently. So as they get older, they dim, but they tend to dim equally across mm -hmm. the entire color range. Whereas a lamp. Yeah. The lamp changes as it gets dark, as it gets older. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind of like the analogy of driving a car off of a lot, a new car off a lot. Now it depreciates, you know, they, <laughs> The, I'm stealing your, your analogy yeah. thing, but um, but yeah, that's exactly what happens. A lamp that that step from brand new to the first significant loss in capability happens a lot sooner, mm -hmm. um, and and not only a lot sooner, but in more noticeable degrees as that lamp ages. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So it, it, it may, it may last 15,000 hours, but you may not be happy with the picture of it. At that goes back to another point, Phil. If I'm going to use my projector all the time, like say this yeah. is my main display, I would probably choose an LED or a laser because I can, I can I, I'm watching cartoons on it, I'm playing video games on it, I'm watching movies at night on it. You know, all of that stuff. Yeah, the the peace of mind of an LED or a laser, and you know it's gonna a it's gonna it's gonna be maintain its brightness for a very long time, and even as it starts to dim, it's going to stay accurate. And L, uh, if if I'm just a it's movie night time, and I want the best out of this movie, I may opt to go to um, a lamp. May at that price point may be a better option. Now, the big thing to also consider is I always say I used to always joke that projector content had to be bulb worthy. You know, the kids, for me to go and fire up my projector and let that lamp warm up, I mean, an LED projector turns on like that. 
So does a, so does an, an, a laser. The, the bulb one, you have to sit there and wait for the logo to come up. And, and then when it goes off, it switches off. And you got to wait for the blinking light to stop after like two minutes before you can unplug it and move it, right? So, right. But if I was going to kick back and watch a movie, that's the way um, the lamp may be the way to go. But that on, instant on, instant off. The other thing, too, is I have a, we have a laser-based high-end projector in, uh, in, in, one of, in the office um, that I, at the company I work for. And a lot of times people forget to turn the damn thing off, right? Mm -hmm. And that projector will be on for days. The difference is with a laser or an LED, they can instantly switch off the light. So when the signal goes off, even though the projector is on, the light source basically switches to basically zero. So even though that projector has been sitting there on for four days, it's not really using any of the light source because the light source has basically switched itself basically off. The way a lamp is, a lamp is all the way on. And if you forget to turn it off, all I'm doing is just closing the DLP or the three LCD shutters. And that lamp back there is on at full bore cooking the entire time. So even mm -hmm. though it's, I forgot to turn it off, I am still burning through my hours versus an LED or a laser where if I forget to turn it off and it switches to black after the, um, after the screen saver goes away, I'm not burning through my hours. So mm -hmm. if you really want peace of mind and not worried about if your kids left it on or someone in the office left it on or you forgot to turn it off before you go on vacation, that's one of the benefits of an LED over, over, a, over a bulb. But don't buy it solely because you think that the picture is going to be better on an LED or laser over a lamp because often that's not the case. Right, right. I mean, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot that goes into the quality of the picture. It's not just the light source. Um, you know, I mean, there's different size sensors or different types of sensors. The, before we stop talking about the light sources, though, um, the, the one thing I do want to mention, because somebody in the comments is going to mention it, um, you don't have, if you own a lamp projector, you don't have to wait until you're getting up to around 15,000 hours to replace the light source. Mm -hmm. If your projector hits that, let's call it that, that first quarter of use, mm -hmm. and you don't like the precipitous drop in brightness and color quality, mm -hmm. a replacement lamp for these projectors, they're, they're pretty common components, and they've mm -hmm. come down in price. You should be able to get one for around 50 bucks, mm -hmm. um, you know, give or take, depending on you know, the lamp. So you can keep that projector perform that lamp based projector performing at closer to its peak level um, because you can swap out the light source should you choose to. Exactly. And also just because like people are really obsessed with RGB laser and mm -hmm. a lot of times the better manufacturers are not using them. If you look at JVC and Sony on their high end mm -hmm. pieces, they use blue laser phosphor. Why? Because the light is predictable. We're talking about the reason why a lot of times if you buy an entry-level JVC, one of their big um, DLNAs, it still uses a lamp. Why? Because I can give you high-quality light with this lamp and then spend the money on uh, multiple three um, DLNA um, panels that are native 4K. I can give you um, better HDMI inputs. I can give you a better optics. I can give you um, better zoom, better shift. All of this stuff, and and for that user at that price point, JVC believed that that was the better option. When it comes to tri laser or mult or multicolor laser, a lot of times the colors, like you said, you get red laser speckle and all of this stuff. In order to get rid of all of that, now I'm 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 going after this fancy number that it can do BT twenty twenty. But now I'm sacrificing what I can do to give you better black levels and better optics and things like that. So a lot of the better manufacturers have not, ex have not adopted tri-laser projectors until you start getting into the Barcos and the Christies, which cost the price of a small BMW. So if you're, looking, if you're a home theater enthusiast looking for a home cinema-based projector that's under 10 or 15K, a lot of companies, that option is still blue laser um, because I get, I get the peace of mind of the laser. I know how that blue laser is going to react. I know that that color is stable. I know how to tame that color. And now I can give you accurate color, great black levels, 
great optics, and all the install features. And until um, a tri-laser comes down more and the quality of that light is as good as what I, they can get from a blue laser phosphor, they're going to stick with blue laser phosphor. Okay. All right. Well, sounds like you answered my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to sum it up, there's a lot of great light sources out there. Whether you're looking at a bulb, whether you're looking at a LED, four color LED, um, blue laser, phosphor, RGB laser, all of them are great light sources. The question is, you, when you get the light, do you know how to accurately take that light and use it to produce accurate colors? And how much does that light cost? And how many, what features do I have to not add in order to give you that light source? So don't just assume if you see two projectors that retail for the same price that you should buy the one that has the solid state light source over the one that has the bulb. You need to ask yourself, what are the other features that are built into this projector and how does it perform when it comes to color accuracy and black levels and things like that. The nice thing about, about us, go to projector reviews, a lot of times you can compare the two and, you, and we'll tell you which one we believe has or which ones have the better um, color reproduction and black levels. And you can use that to make the proper buying decision for your application. All right, Phil, anything else you want to add? No, no, that's, that's it for my question. But I know, uh, I know the question for the next video. <laughs> okay, so as, as we mentioned, um, if you have any comments, I'm sure you do, because I know you guys are, have to have a, lot of converse, have a lot of comments, make sure you put them into the comments and we will make sure that we um, maybe answer some or address some of those uh, some of those questions in the near future. And I think that we that I that Phil has another question for next week in his brain, and we'll see what he has to say next week. So take care, everyone, and we will talk to you soon.